sometimes it gets tiring watching the same old harem isekai anime because it just becomes too boring. That's why we're going to add some freshness by talking about it in the top 10 new harem isekai anime you missed. Number 10, Blue Archive the Animation. <laughs> Starting off, we go to Kivotos, a city of schools where students pack heat like it's no big deal. Our hero, Sensei, finds himself in this academy wonderland from America with a missing student council president and a crisis on his hands. His first mission? How about Abydos High School, a once prestigious academy, now struggling with just five students and a mountain of debt. Time for some hands-on teaching anime style. I love to call this an anime made for fans of the game, but honestly, it doesn't even feel like that half the time. The animation's alright, nothing right home about, but nothing's terrible either. The fights in the second half start to get more fluid, which is a plus. If you're a Blue Archive player, give it a shot, because it's actually enough to entertain you. It's like a decent ad for the source material. Number 9, Remonster. <laughs> Ever wondered what it'd be like to those green goblins that Goblin Slayer massacres? Well, Tomokui Kanata is living or reliving that dream. With memories from his past life intact, he's determined to become the strongest, starting from being a goblin. From eating his way to power to building a loyal monster girl harem, it's like that time I got reincarnated as a slime, but with more teeth and less slime. This anime reminds me why I love harem series. It manages to pursue the genre without getting too cringe, thanks to decent storytelling and relationship dynamics. The power dynamics and evolving relationships feel surprisingly natural. Sure, it's not groundbreaking, but it's entertaining as hell. The animation's decent, the humor hits more often than not, and the story's well thought out. If you're in an isekai with a monster twist, give every monster a shot. It might just surprise you. Number 8, chilling in another world with level 2 super cheap powers. It sucks to get your hopes up, but when it turns out you're just trash, this is what exactly happens to our boy Bonanza when he gets summoned as a hero but turns out to be a total dud. Talk about a letdown. But wait, there's a twist. Once he hits level 2, he becomes overpowered and beyond belief. Now he's living his best life, solving problems with the snap of his two fingers, and even forming his own family. <laughs> The best part? The harm's subtle. This honestly is a nice change of pace. The characters are fun and likable, especially the female lead, Fenris. If you don't like her, you might as well drop the show. The animation is pretty good for this type of series, and the opening? <laughs> Absolute banger. And of course, the harm's gonna come sooner or later, whether the MC likes it or not. Number seven, God's Game We Play. <laughs> Imagine waking up a dragon god and demanding to play games with the best player of the era. That's exactly what Leo Leisha does, and boy does she hit the jackpot with Faye Theophilius. Together, they team up to take on other gods in high stake games, each with its own unique conditions and hidden rules. It's like No Game No Life meets mythology with a lot of good old comedy. Nanika 
The chemistry between Faye and Leo Lichia is top notch, making their teamwork both entertaining and heartwarming. While some might call it mid, they're missing the point. It's not about the complexity of the games, but the joy of playing with others. It's such a nostalgia trip, but it has that modern twist to it. I'd even go as far as to say this is a hidden gem. Just don't let the ratings fool you. Number six, Chain Soldier. <laughs> Alright folks, buckle up because this one's a wild ride and I mean it. Our boy Yuki gets pulled into Mato, a monster-filled dimension only to become the slave of Koyuka Koyuzin, who is one of the top dogs of the Mato Defense Force. But here's the twist, being her slave grants Yuki insane powers to fight the monsters. And you already know something spicy's coming up because every time he does become her slave, he gets a <laughs> reward. <laughs> Let's be real, this show cranks the fan service up to 11, but underneath all that, there's actually a decent plot and some pretty cool action scenes. The character dynamics, especially between Yuki and Koyuka, are more nuanced than you might expect. The animation from Seven Arcs is solid, with some spectacular special effects. If you can handle the Yechi elements, you'll find a surprisingly engaging story about power, responsibility, and yes, a whole lot of cute girls. Number 5, Tales of wedding rings. Ever been to a wedding that crowd crashed by a monster? <laughs> Welcome to Haruto's life. This guy follows his childhood friend Hime to another world, only to end up marrying her and four other princesses to save the kingdom. It's your classic isekai setup with actual marriage. Haruto must collect rings from five princesses to gain the power to defeat the Abyss King. While the plot might be a bit predictable, the characters' interactions keep things interesting. The pacing is nice, with some good story beats that'll keep you engaged. However, don't expect too much in the romance department. Our boy Haruto is as dense as you are. The animation is decent, though, not groundbreaking. It's a solid harm series that has a good blend of action and isekai romance. What else can I say? Just try it out and see for yourself. Number 4, The Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic. <laughs> So what is the wrong way to use healing magic? Well, our boy Ken Usato gets accidentally summoned along with the actual heroes and ends up with the supposed useless healing magic. But under the tutelage of the scary but awesome Captain Rose, he turns that healing magic into a force to be reckoned with. It's not just about healing wounds. If you're tired of overpowered protagonists who start strong, watch Ken work his butt off to become a true hero. The character interactions, especially between Ken and Rose, are the highlights. While the plot may seem generic at first, the show handles certain aspects so well that it becomes genuinely enjoyable. The animation is decent and the voice acting is solid. For Isekai fans looking for a fun, feel-good watch, the wrong way to use healing magic hits all the right notes. Number 3, The Banished Former Hero Lives As He Pleases. Who knew being a banished hero was a good thing? Alan, a former hero reincarnated into a noble family, gets kicked out for being useless. Little do they know, he's thrilled to finally live life on his own terms. But his peaceful days are short-lived when he runs into his ex-fiancé and gets dragged back into heroics. Don't 
Don't be carried away by the standard premise. This is a refreshing change of pace in the isekai genre. The easygoing Alan makes for many hilarious situations, given his laid-back nature and natural inclination to run from trouble. The comedy is always good, and there are some truly touching moments. What helps make it different is Alan's maturity. He isn't your typical angsty or oblivious isekai hero. Instead, he's a guy living life and also occasionally saving the day. And that's so rare for these two genres. Number two. Sasaki to Pichan. Have you ever seen a talking bird? Well, Sasaki, a 39-year-old salary man, adopts a magic Java sparrow named Pichan and suddenly finds himself juggling two worlds, a secret government agency and way more excitement than he ever bargained for. With the ability to travel between worlds and some newfound magical powers, Sasaki starts a lucrative business selling tech from his world to the less advanced one. <laughs> It's just that the show does an excellent job blending concepts from magical girls, secret organizations, and even isekai elements. It can become chaotic at times, but it's still fun because of the character interactions and world building. The animation quality and overall production is solid, with some standout moments in the very first episode. This is a series for all those who like a little something different in their isekai, just a salary man and a talking bird. Number 1, Mushoku Tensei Season 2 Part 2. And at number one, we've got the grandfather of modern isekai returning for another round. Rudis Grey Rat continues his journey as a student at the University of Magic. He reunites with his childhood friend, Syphilet. He gets married and faces new challenges, both magical and personal. But it's not all smooth sailing, because Rudis's journey is about to begin, and it's not like anything he's done before. <laughs> Mushoku Tensei raises the bar further with impressive animation, layered characters, and world building. Rudis grows up and also matures during this season, accepting adult responsibilities and interactions. The show is never shy about sensitive subjects, and it executes it perfectly. Not to mention, the character development is insane. Because of that and more, Mushoku Tensei is number one in our list of the top 10 new harem isekai anime you missed. Oh, <laughs> my